Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome to Dark Nights with Poe and Munro. This is another FMV by Daveki Studios. They are the same people who made the infectious madness of Dr. Decker and the shape-shifting detective, which I completed just a few weeks ago. I really enjoyed my time with the shape-shifting detective, so I'm, I'm very happy to see that they are continuing on with August and its citizens and its very strange aura. Now, this is a little bit different from the games they've done in the past. This isn't one big story, this is six episodes. I don't know if it's like one continuing plotline or if each episode is its own unique contained story. Either way, I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. And obviously we are taking control of Poe and Munro. And according to the Steam page, one of the one of the things I noticed in a in a description of the story was um you know, will will they survive? Will they stay together? And I'm not gonna lie. My number one goal is split them up. I don't... He's married. Poe is married. And apparently he's got... Like, did he say three kids? I'm like, this poor man's wife. This poor man's wife. So if there is anything I can influence, I hope I can cause them to split up. I am going to be attempting to cause strife and drama at every possible instance. I'm not going to lie. That is my one goal with this. I do believe this is a prequel. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. I couldn't find any specific answer, but I think this may be a prequel to the shape-shifting detective. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, with that, I think that's everything. I did remember to turn on subtitles, so let's get this started. It was a dark and stormy night. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. Oh! Uh... Kitty cat? You can never find the right button, Poe. Not at all. I'm merely demonstrating that this shows the cat's meow. And on that note, what's next, Monroe? It's on the schedule, silly. I know that. I'm just making it sound like you have a choice. Okay, then. What shall I choose? Let me see. Oh. Oh, this, this is a weird way of deciding, but I'm, I'm glad... Oh, that's... I choose a long walk on the beach. Ah, yes. With the moon's bright eye bobbing on the black tide. No. The sun is shining. And the sand is hot and soft between my toes. Wouldn't you like to walk on a beach with me, Poe? Alas, I fear I would burst into flames at the sun's first embrace. But you are outside this afternoon. Then I must simply hate the beach. That's a shame. I hate skinny dipping alone. I'd never dream of letting you skinny dip on your own. Become I'm talking your wife. of wet dreams. Dreams? No! And nightmares. With Poe Excellent and Monroe. choice, Monroe. I didn't have one really, did I? You always have a choice, Monroe. Hmm. 
but that doesn't mean you can change things. Maybe you should try interpreting the next call of the stream, po. I fear I would lack your warmth and insight. You have the ability to turn even the most ghoulish visions into something hopeful. Not always. Do you suffer from nightmares, Munro? Doesn't everyone? Tell me about yours. Well, there is this one I've been having lately. Go on. I can't see. I'm stumbling around trying to feel my way in the pitch black, but I keep bumping into people. It's like I'm trying to push through this crowd, but they don't know that I'm there. Perhaps you're feeling isolated. Hmm. Maybe. But I'm not interested in them. They're just in my way. It's like I'm searching for something. The number nine. But what does nine represent, Poe? Well, according to Dante, there are nine levels of hell. Well, I feel so much better now. I did warn you. Mm. Perhaps you should help our next caller. They're already waiting. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. Hi, Frankie. What a beautiful voice you have. Oh, no. Oh. Thank you. I think all voices are beautiful. What do you think to Poe's voice? I hate it. We've got an incel on the line. Okay. So, what's your dream, listener? I'm in August, and wherever I go, all I can hear is the radio. It's everywhere. It's loud and relentless, but there's this... bird. She cuts through the noise and guides me. I listen to the bird, and I fall blissfully asleep. That's very interesting. It's creepy. People dream about their surroundings a lot. And a dream within a dream? That's nothing to worry about either. What do you think, Poe? I think you have a hardcore fan, Munro. What did the bird look like, Frankie? Beautiful. Angelic. Red-headed. But it's trapped in a cage. A prison. But there's only one warden. And the warden is weak. There's a warden? Another bird with a rumbling voice that makes me angry. That face! It plumes its feathers, but my bird? The one that calls me? She ain't calling you, dude. She's not interested in him. And she is caged. Munro, this is obviously a prank. He's talking about us and trying to be funny. But it's a dream. I never said it was a dream. Well, I think um, we've had quite enough of this. Listen to the warden jangling his keys. Don't you see he's imprisoned you, Ellis? Well, um, Frankie, we don't oh. use our first names on air, so... I, I cut the just... call! I've cut the call. Is that a good idea? Well, what was I supposed to do? Help him. He needed help. Don't encourage him, Ellis. Yeah! These kinds of things must be nipped in the bud. This is how you get stalkers, Are we still alive? <laughs> Sorry, listeners. <laughs> This was a very strange call. I hope you'll agree. Frankie, if you're still listening, I do apologize for Poe. He can get very protective. No, he's going to think you need saving. I kind of get your analogy now. Do I, Munro? Oh, yes! Very well, then. Split Send them up. Down. Oh, listeners, we've upset him now. Poe's got all frowny face. Go, you have a stalker. Oh, What is it? <sighs> I swear to What's God, that? if he's in the building. This? Oh, it's nothing. What is it? It's nothing. Give it to me. How long is the break for? Give it to me. All in good time, so how long? Three minutes. Okay, I'm going to make some tea for us. You stay here. You're making tea for me. I do it all the time. What's going on? Give me the note, or I'm leaving. Of course, we must have continued drama, mustn't we, Alice? What's that supposed to mean? I'm 
going to kill you. Oh no! What the hell, Paul? Why were you hiding this from me? It's just some psychotic listener, that's all. Frankie? Not necessarily. We have lots of psychotic listeners. How can you joke about this as a death threat? It's clearly a death threat. I knew it would upset you, but I'm an old hand at this, Alice. People see you as a celebrity. It makes them do abnormal things, but they're just normal people. And you're not putting when her on a pedestal at all, Poe. Someone slipped it under the door. Just now? Well, yes, but it's nothing to worry about. We've been getting them for the last few weeks. What? Weeks? Maybe a month. Dude! So there could be a killer behind the door. Maybe, but never when I've looked. Poe! It isn't locked, Alice. People can just walk in anyway. Well, that's terrifying. Uh... Oh! There! I told you it was nothing to worry about. T? You're not going out there. You're going live. Understood. He is surprisingly blasé about all of this. I think I'm gonna go home. Don't be like that. How could you keep this from me? I thought you cared about me. What if I'd been killed? Um... I'd... I will say it's, it's very difficult to say what's gonna happen. They're from my wife. Oh! Gwendolyn? Yes, Gwendolyn. It's her perfume. Does she know? I work late when I don't have any work to do, and I kiss her on the cheek instead of the lips. Poor Gwendolyn. Yes, she knows. But does she want to kill me? She doesn't know who with. Also, it's a threat for him. Do it, love. I love you. I love each and every one of you listeners. I'll never be a frowny face again. Good save. Been having any more bad dreams lately, August? Okay, who's our next listener? It's... Frankie again. Of course. Put him through. Back. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. I didn't finish what I had to say. I'm sorry about that. You can carry on now. Sometimes the radio gets too much. It makes me frustrated. So I go into the belly of the beast, and I hide, and I listen, and I wait. So this is a dream that breaks into other dreams. Of course there are no segues for dreams. Poe? The belly of the beast. Have you been leaving messages, Frankie? Yes, John. Yes, I have. Have you been getting them? What did the messages say? So I guess Frankie and Gwendolyn have the same perfume. Um, I've never caught the call again. <laughs> Sorry, Frankie, we seem to have lost you there. But if you're still listening... You're a creep. I think your dream expresses what a kind and gentle person you are deep down. And the fact that you want to protect the bird tells me that you would never hurt anyone in any way. And I think that's really special, Frankie. So, thank you for your dream. Oh, don't. I'm not hiding, Monroe. I'll do it. If it's Frankie, maybe he won't hurt me. You don't know that. And what if it's my wife? I thought you said she didn't know. Hide. Oh god, I, I'm inclined to have him deal with Hi. it. Oh. 
And scene. I hope you enjoyed, fair listeners. Everything you just heard was an elaborate fiction. The first of many fictional dramas on dark nights with Poe and Munro. That is a good save, but... Starting off with a murder, holy shit! Burying the body, of course. It's done. It was self-defense, Al. If he brought a knife, then yeah. We will never talk of this again. Ever. Let's just go. When I was 12, my father died. He was riding his bike to work and he got hit by a bus, a school bus, my school bus. Oh. It was all over very quickly, but I was at the back of the bus and I could see everything. He didn't move, didn't get up, died instantly. The image of it somehow stayed with me. You think? It doesn't anymore. I couldn't tell you what it looked like. Mother told me a secret. There's a way that you can make your memories disappear. Can you make today disappear? No. But you can. Pick one of these. Well, the apple matches her lipstick, so... Now hold it tightly in your hands and close your eyes. Now what? Think of your most troubling memory from this evening and imagine the object you're holding is there. Picture it so you can see it. Okay. You have to make yourself believe that the object is there. Okay, it's there. Now open your eyes. Now what? Throw it away. When you throw it away, it will take that memory with it. And if it doesn't? It definitely will. Finally tonight, police are appealing for anyone who might know the whereabouts of 35-year-old veterinarian Francisco Bilson. Oh dear. Um, Mr. Bilson was last seen by his wife. God damn it. A couple of nights ago at um, around 7 o'clock before returning to his office on Chaucer Street. Please contact the... Um... The August Police Department if you're able to help. And that's your August update with Poe. And Monroe. So what's next, Monroe? Nightmares. And dreams. Dreams. And nightmares. Ooh, this is really taking it out of her. 
Are you okay? I'm not feeling that well. I mean, that is fair. But we do have a caller waiting. I'm sorry. Maybe some other time. Don't worry. I'll take this first one. It's Frankie. No. Don't mess with me, Paul. He is a... It is Frankie. Put him through. <clears throat> Frankie, you're alive. <laughs> I mean, Frankie, you're alive with Monroe. Who is this? It's Frankie. Thank you for what you did. Frankie? You're... What did we do? You gave me peace. Thank you. I was doing... Bad things. I I've done bad things. What bad things? What have you done, Frankie? Locker number nine at August train station. Her head's in there. Oh! The dogs ate the rest of her. You've killed someone? No. I've killed people. The other girl is behind the gym in an in industrial pen. She may be gone now. I liked her hair. Why are you telling us this? Because I want forgiveness, John. And because the police won't ever find me now, will they? Sorry, listeners. We're going to have to cut to a break. You're dead. I am dead. You buried me, don't you remember? But I'll be in touch. Oh. Soon. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. How do we pay it back? A radiothon. In bed with Poe and Monroe. Lurkers, if you're out there just lurking, then give us a sign. It's Millicent. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. The station shuts down. I don't know what I'll do. You're safe now. Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. Oh, oh, I, t I have thoughts, I have thoughts about all of, oh, we could have called the police. I'm, I'm reading on ahead. Um, oh, that was good. That was a good opening. That was a good intro. I would never, I would never have expected that we'd end up killing someone. Oh. Oh, the, there were a couple of things I wanted to say during that. Um, at the beginning, when she was describing her dream, like, oh, the number nine, I want the number nine. My my first thought was like, maybe you don't want the number nine. You want nine, like the German word for no, as in no, stop sleeping with people who are in committed relationships. Maybe, th <laughs> like, cause I'm, I'm determined to split them up. I'm determined. First impressions, we chose the cat. 34%, pretty equal. Um, Frankie who? Oh, we could have played something over him. That would have been funny. Yet we picked up the note in the majority there. Okay. We cut his second call. I was hoping he was going to call back a third time. I mean, we could just keep cutting him off, listening to him get more and more pissed. That would have been pretty funny. Um, oh, I wonder what would have happened if we had called the police. I know there are branching paths to each episode, maybe you can get him caught without killing him. Yet yeah, we, we let Poe greet Frankie, pretty even Steven's there. Hmm. Oh, I wonder what Monroe's cover would have been. I wonder if maybe she would have called the police. Because if, here's the thing, that, that seems like a pretty cut and dry case of self-defense to me frankie brought a knife and you know if poe managed to wrestle it away from him and killed him then that i don't think poe would have gotten into any trouble there frankie was a serial killer trying to kill potentially both him and monroe so yeah i i wonder if maybe monroe would have called the police so that could have been 
that could have been interesting. Yet we poked Monroe on the sofa, 86%. And not the only fruit you picked the orange, but we picked the apple. Oh, I... I... I was gonna say I can't believe he was a serial killer, but no, I can. I can, he was real creepy. What I'm more surprised by, he had a wife. Why is everyone cheating on their wives in August? For God's sake, just someone be loyal. <laughs> be loyal in these August streets. Oh, is it? Oh shit, is it jumping into the next one? Uh, if it's jumping into the next one, then here's the thing. I only have five minutes on my timer. I am going to try and dedicate, you know, one, one episode of my Let's Play to one episode of the game. I think that makes sense because they, they only seem to be around 30 minutes in length. So I think it makes a lot more sense to cut off here rather than playing the first five minutes of the next episode and then having to cut. Um, considering I have five minutes left, um, my initial thoughts, again, I love the, the kind of paint motif, you know, the, the paint in liquid, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the acting, again, I know I've only seen about 30 minutes of it, but the acting is so far still very good. Uh, Clemens Keering and Leah Canard. I don't know if I'm pronouncing their names correctly, my apologies there, but they are, they're both doing cracking jobs. I don't think I mentioned this when I let's played the shapeshifting detective, but I'm really enjoying the soundtrack. Both the shapeshifting detective and what I've heard so far of Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe, they both have really good soundtracks. Gareth Foy is doing a phenomenal job with the music. I really like it. And as for the actual story, I really liked episode one, Frankie, a lot. I did not expect that we were going to jump straight into a murder. I really, I had no idea that Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe was going to open with such a bang. So I'm really excited to see how the other episodes go. Um, I will say I was reminded a bit of the ending of The Shapeshifting Detective. And the augmentation questions that Agent X asked Sam, one of them was, I've killed a serial killer. Does that make you happy? So I I don't know if that was an intentional callback. You'd think it would be. You'd really assume that it would be. And I like that. I like that there are links to prior games. Or, well, to the shapeshifting detective, at least. It'd be fun if there was a callback to Dr. Decker, but it's, that one's a little bit trickier considering that Dr. Decker was its, you know, own enclosed story. So, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting anything there, but I do hope for, you know, multiple references to the shapeshifting detective and, you know, the characters from that. Hmm. Now, I don't think I have anything else to add, so I might as well bring this episode to a close right here. So, yeah, I know this episode has only been 25 minutes long, but I think this is a pretty good place to cut. In the next episode, we play episode two. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.